I'd like to discuss the number one sign or symptom that could occur if you have overdosed on your vitamin D. But before I get into this, I just have to say something. The danger or the side effects of not having enough vitamin D are about a thousand times more than having toxicity or too much vitamin D. So that being said, it's very difficult to overdose with vitamin D. Let me just jump right in. I have this chart right here and it's not scaled perfectly, but it'll give you the rough idea of, of what this means. So down here we have weeks. We have one week, three weeks, 10 weeks, 30 weeks, and a hundred weeks, okay? Now, how many weeks are in a year? 52, right? So that's gonna be somewhere in here. So you can see it's not scaled correctly. Now, on the left side of this graph, you have international units of vitamin D. So up here at the top, we have a million international units. And we have 300,000 international units. We have 100,000, 30,000, 10,000. Now, right now, you might be taking, I don't know, 600 IUs or 1,000 IUs or maybe 2,000 IUs of your vitamin D. It's like not even on this chart. This starts at 10,000 IUs. And this is what I recommend even as a maintenance dosage. So you can see even at 10,000 IUs, 100 weeks, there's no toxicity at all. And we get to 30,000, okay, all the way to here, maybe uh, up to like maybe 10 weeks, um, there could be some potential side effects, right? 10 weeks. And then we have 100,000, right? For maybe two and a half weeks, it's fine. Even 300,000 units for a week is fine. But there's this little section, which I'm gonna explain right here. This area right here is safe if you adjust the cofactors. Now, what does that mean, cofactors? It means that vitamin D always works with other factors that help it in its function and absorption, et cetera. And there's two really big cofactors, magnesium and vitamin K2. And there's other ones too, like zinc and maybe B6 that help to keep it safer and keep it from becoming toxic. For example, if you take a lot of vitamin D, it helps you absorb calcium into the blood by 20 times, because that's what it does. And now you have all this extra calcium in the blood. Well, vitamin K2 will take it from the blood and transport it into the bone. So having enough K2 with D3 buffers it and keeps it from creating a problem. And so this section right here is safe if you adjust the cofactors and also if you drink more water because the big problem with too much calcium is kidney stones. That's one of the symptoms. It's not the top one, it's number two, which I'll get to. But if you drink enough water, like two and a half liters of fluid, the odds of you getting kidney stones go down to zero. Why? Because kidney stones occur when you have a super concentrated amount of calcium. And if you're drinking enough water, there's no way the calcium can be super concentrated anymore. So you can actually prevent that problem. But typically the toxicity effect from vitamin D really occurs when you're taking hundreds of thousands of international units of vitamin D for many, many weeks, okay? Now, that being said, the number one sign would be calcification somewhere in your body. Now, what's common for women is calcification in the breast tissue, right? That's kind of a benign situation. It doesn't create any problems, but it can occur. You can have calcification in any organ or tissue. So that would be the first sign that you have too much vitamin D. Number two, kidney stones, okay? But of course, kidney stones could come from many different things. Uh, number three, nerve symptoms like numbness, pain, tingling, any type of weird type symptoms with your nerves, that could be a sign that you have too much vitamin D. And number four is excessive thirst, okay? And number five, excessive urination, both of these. Now, what's interesting about these two is you usually get these symptoms when you're a diabetic, but in this situation, it's where you have too much calcium because the vitamin D is too high. So there you have it, these are the symptoms. But I wanna show you something that relates to toxicity, I think. This is my theory. I think um, a lot of the cases that you hear about with toxicity are from vitamin D2, not vitamin D3. You see, the 
doctors usually prescribe vitamin D2, not D3, okay? They'll usually give you like 50,000 international units of vitamin D2 once a week. And there's some really big differences between vitamin D2 and D3 that I'm going to explain that could cause the person to take vitamin D2 for a long period of time, simply because they're not going to really see the results, okay? Let me explain. Let's compare D2 to D3. Well, first of all, D2 is not as effective as D3. It's not as bioavailable. It's not as studied. It does not prevent fractures like vitamin D3 will, but it does reverse rickets in infants, which is a severe vitamin D deficiency. It has a different effect on the symptom depression, which relates to a couple of factors, which I don't want to necessarily get into in this video. And this next one is very important to know. It does not affect the immune system, okay? It doesn't improve the immune system like vitamin D3. So here you are taking D2 and not seeing the results. So maybe you'll be taking more or for a long period of time. And that potentially could be, and this is just my theory, why there is toxicity in the first place. But again, I'm not 100% on that, but that's just my theory. Now, since we talked about the main symptom, which is calcification, which is excess calcium, I think it's very appropriate to watch this video next right here.